So, Kim, what is public sociology? Well, since its very earliest years, sociology has been interested in marginalised populations and the structural inequalities that they experience and which impact on uh, the, the course of the lives of these marginalised populations. Nowadays we have this uh, widespread and very deeply embedded idea of public sociology, which we can really trace that modern idea of public sociology back to uh, Michael Borowoy's 2004 presentation. Michael Borowoy was the um, president of the American Sociological Association and he gave a conference presentation where he issued a call to arms for sociologists to do what he called public sociology. And this is about sociologists addressing questions which are of interest to uh, the wider public and uh, to policy, rather than just what is of interest to other sociologists. Hmm. So he contrasts this idea of public sociology with the idea of, of professional sociology. So professional sociology is where we, as sociologists, do work that we find interesting, that our colleagues find interesting. We publish uh, for the benefit of other sociologists and we have conversations very much within our own community. Mm. On the other hand, public sociology is much more about uh, questions which are of interest to the public. It's about sharing research with the public and feeding into wider public and political debates. Thank you. So is public sociology really that new? It's not really that new, although the idea and the notion of public sociology may be quite new. The approach to sociology that we now recognise as public sociology can actually be traced far further back in sociology's history than a 2004 conference. Hmm. So if we think, for example, um, about the feminist philosopher Mary Wollstonecraft, who was writing in 1792 her work on, on uh, the vindication of the rights of woman, which fed into the uh, political debates around formal education at the time and really argued in favour of women having access to formal education, hmm. given their role, uh, their instrumental role in the early socialisation of children. Then about half a century later, uh, Karl Marx was writing about the negative consequences of industrial capitalism for the labouring classes and really issuing an impassioned statement for society as a whole to be mindful of these negative consequences and crucially to, to do something about it um, before things got too problematic for the labouring classes. And a lesser known sociologist who was doing what we would now recognise as public sociology in the latter half of the 19th and the early part of the 20th centuries was a black American sociologist called W.E.B. Du Bois. And Du Bois was interested in what has now become known as the race problem, which was about the lack of state, the subordinate status and the lack of integration of African Americans at the time. And for him, this was a, a really complex and deeply rooted social question, which needed fundamentally sociological questions to address. So he was interested in what is race, what is whiteness, what is blackness, and actually what constitutes a social problem in the first place. And he found uh, through collecting empirical data and through doing inductive research, which is where he collected his data and drew his own conclusions, rather than relying on the theories of the time, which were really underpinned by incredibly uh, racist principles. He actually found that this lack of integration and the problematic status of African Americans was down to uh, structural inequality and institutional racism. And so armed with this sociological data and his sociological findings, he became a really prominent political activist, arguing in favour of full civil rights for African Americans uh, and a real leader of the early civil rights movement in America, but was very much coming from um, a sociological perspective, doing absolutely what we would now call public sociology. Thank you. So is it simply the case that public sociology is a question of getting out there and disseminating your results? Certainly public sociology is about sharing our research in different places and talking to different audiences, but actually public sociology does also involve the way in which um, research is conceived of and produced. So in sociology we're really keen to work with non-academic um, members of the public or members of organisations to actually help us to shape our research, to help us define the sorts of questions that are important, the sorts of questions that we should be asking. Then we also have sets of methods which 
uh, were used to, to get members of the public actually involved in the research process itself. So for example, participatory action research is where we train members of the public to help us collect data, to work alongside us in collecting sociological data. And if we then think about what we want to do with that data, if members of the public or members of organisations have been involved with us in that research from the very beginning, it stands to reason that we would then want to publish alongside them. And publishing with, with our, um, what we would call collaborators, quite rightly, can actually open us up to whole new networks of um, publics, of organisations, of institutions, um, policy makers, people who can really make a difference in society um, and help us to address the, the structural and institutional inequalities and injustices that sociology is, is able to identify. But it's public sociology that helps mm. us to do something about that. Thank you very much. Is it the case that you could give me uh, a striking example of this public sociology today? So a really good example of this, Matt, is one of our own colleagues, Vicky Bolivar, who looked at UCAS data to assess how well it is students from different backgrounds are doing at university. So what Vicky found is that students who got slightly lower grades at the point of entry to university from state schools actually did as well as students from fee-paying schools who got higher grades to get into university. So Vicky took this really interesting and, and incredibly important sociological data to education policy makers and actually got them to change their policy around what we call contextual offers, where universities now have the freedom to make slightly lower offers to students from particular uh, socioeconomic backgrounds in the full knowledge that they will actually perform as well, if not better, than students from fee-paying schools. Thank you very much.